Who would win in a fight between Incineroar from Pokemon and Wolf O'Donnell from Star Fox? I'm Ink and this is Smash Bracket, the show where we put every character from Super Smash Bros into a giant animated tournament to figure out who's canonically the most powerful. Let's get into it. Near the center of the Milky Way galaxy sits a star system called Lilat. This place is home to some of the most capable pilots and mercenaries in the universe, but standing out among all of them is one of the most skilled and ruthless gunslingers to ever fly a spaceship, Wolf O'Donnell. Wolf is best known for leading the most dangerous team of mercenaries in the Lila system, Star Wolf. This team is infamous for getting results no matter the mission and doing so with ruthless aggression and masterful efficiency. Star Wolf has had a number of skilled pilots and outlaws on the team over the years, but they wouldn't be anywhere where they are today without the direction of their fearless leader. Wolf is an expert strategist, deadly marksman, and arguably the best pilot in the entire galaxy. When Wolf takes on a job, he won't rest until he's done everything in his power to accomplish the mission. We've seen him break and build new alliances, commit genocide, and even terraform entire planets to achieve his goals. When Star Wolf gained enough notoriety to have massive bounties placed on their heads, Wolf evaded an entire planet's military for long enough to overthrow an evil alien empire and clear their names. There is almost nothing that Wolf isn't willing to do for a paycheck and to prove that he's the best around. This is perhaps best on display when Star Wolf accepted a job from an evil genius space monkey named Andros, and together they declared war. But not just on one country or one planet, they declared war on the entire solar system. And you'd figure, I mean, it's one wolf and one monkey versus the entire solar system. It would obviously take about five seconds for the solar system to win. But no, it was actually close. And then a year or so later, Wolf went to war again, but this time with an alien race that was threatening the entire universe. And that time, he actually won and destroyed the entire alien race and their home planet in the process. My point with all of this is that Wolf is not one to be intimidated or easily put down. But that isn't to say that he didn't have rivals. Throughout all of these adventures, Wolf was always dealing with a force of mercenaries called Star Fox. As rivals, Star Fox and Star Wolf often found themselves on opposing sides of a conflict. Yet this rivalry is also one that drove both teams to constantly improve themselves. Star Fox upgraded their ships to have walker forms, so Star Wolf upgraded their ships to have a walker form. Wolf installed a flaming wolf head launcher on his ship, Star Fox gets heat resistant armor. Fox kills Wolf's employer half a dozen times, so Wolf helps kill Fox's dad and never shuts up about it. You'll be seeing your dad soon, Fox. Both teams are a near perfect match in terms of skill, power, and arsenal. And being able to match Star Fox's arsenal is no small feat. Their signature R-Wings are one of the most impressive ships in the universe, but Star Wolf ships called Wolfins are just as impressive, if not more so. There have been many models of Wolfins and R-Wings over the years, but they've always been nearly identical in power, speed, and durability. The earliest models only flew around four times the speed of sound in atmosphere and about 10 times the speed of light in open space. But the fastest ships have been able to traverse the entire Lilac system in a matter of seconds to shoot down interplanetary ballistic missiles. And that's doubly impressive when you realize that this was before the teams even had aim assist in their ships. So Wolf had to be swinging around his body like a madman to hit these shots at interplanetary speeds. But the Wolfen isn't just fast, it can also take a serious hit and keep on chugging. It's been able to withstand an entire planet blowing up on top of it. Which isn't even the only time a planet has exploded on a ship like this. And keep in mind that this was all in the base model of the Wolfen. In Star Fox 64, Andros upgraded Wolf's ship to the Wolfen 2. This thing had increased stats all around the board and it was immune to nearly every method of attack in the game. That said, while Wolf ships can take a huge amount of damage all at once, its G-Diffuser shields aren't equipped to handle sustained damage over time. And enemies have exploited this weakness on Wolf ships before, such as when Fox was able to shoot down the Wolf in two by exhausting its shields with a steady stream of laser fire. But even after Wolf's fancy new ship was destroyed, he refused to admit defeat. He went into hiding and became the ruler of a criminal hideout called the Sargasso Space Zone. Here, he was the boss over the worst of the worst criminals and the best of the best mercenaries, and he took on the title Lord Wolf. Here, he continued to hone his skills as a pilot to become even better than before, and eventually joined up with Star Fox to take out that alien race we mentioned earlier, the Aperoids. But you can't wipe out an entire universe-threatening race of aliens without a few tricks up your sleeve. Wolf's ship comes equipped with smart bombs capable of instantly pulverizing small meteor fields and dual laser blasters strong enough to destroy those same meteors one at a time. Wolf's favorite method of attack, though, is just throwing caution to the wind and slamming his ship full speed into his enemies. He calls this attack his signature lightning tornado. Weaponry and attacks aside though, the Wolfen can manifest barrier shields that are even tankier than the ship itself. 
These barriers can stop shots from the Demon Sniper Rifle, a weapon capable of destroying the Wolfen in a single hit, which, again, isn't even something that an exploding planet was able to do. And Wolf got access to the Sniper Rifle and more when he joined up with Star Fox to fight the Aperoids. In the multiplayer of Star Fox Assault, which is canonically a real training session for the Star Fox team, Wolf also has access to an impressive arsenal of machine guns, anti-aircraft missiles, grenades, homing launchers, and more. He can also summon a jetpack to allow him to fly around and a cloaking device to let him turn invisible. Wolf's also got his own personal barrier shields that are just as durable as the Wolfen's. But even without those shields, Wolf himself is capable of taking just about anything that the Arwen can dish out multiple times over. But deadly weapons and impressive durability aren't what earned Wolf O'Donnell his reputation in Lilat. Wolf doesn't just set out to destroy his targets, but he makes sure to do it with a level of deadly skill and efficiency that no one else could even hope to match. He's the best at what he does, and what he does isn't very nice. Whether he's ruling over space pirates or wiping out an entire species of alien invaders, foes had better think twice before standing in the way of Lord Wolf O'Donnell. There are times when all the bad in the world seems to slow to a halt and people just become friendlier. For some, that may be holidays, for some, that might be family gatherings, or for many people, of course, whenever a new Pokemon game releases. Few franchises have even come close to rivaling the staggering success of Pokemon, which you might be able to guess from the sheer number of fighters we got in Smash from the series. So allow me, once again, to welcome you to the world of Pokemon. In the Alolo region of Pokemon, some set out to become the greatest trainers, breeders, or researchers. But one Pokemon stands unique among all of them, with the sole goal of making the crowd go wild. Meet Incineroar, the final evolution of the Fire-type starter Pokemon, Litten. Incineroar lives for the thrill of being center stage as they wrestle their way to glory. And you can see these wrestling influences not just in their flashy moveset, but throughout every element of their design. Incineroar is the heel Pokemon, which in the wild world of pro wrestling, refers to somebody that people love to hate. This kind of fighter makes the audience absolutely livid, but in the very best way possible. Heels are loud, braggadocious, and rude, but often these wrestling supervillains are just putting on an act for the sake of a good show. And this is the exact case with Incineroar as well. They may be rough-mannered and egocentric, but at their core, Incineroar has a heart of gold and loves the pure thrill of battle. In fact, they love fighting so much that they find beating down a weaker opponent boring, and they seek out a true challenge against the strongest of opponents. And it honestly takes a lot to find a stronger opponent than Incineroar, especially because they can boost most of their own stats and lower most of their enemies' stats by a factor of four. They've been able to knock back ultra-heavy opponents with their signature spin, Darkest Lariat, and Incineroar is also tough enough to shake off some hits from even the strongest Pokemon out there, like Machamp. They're also fast enough to not even struggle with a Pokemon who moves quickly enough to be nothing but a blur. But should Incineroar find a strong challenger, they have plenty of tricks up their sleeve to hold their own even when totally outclassed. The move Endure lets them withstand an otherwise deadly attack, while the move Protect could stop these attacks altogether. Incineroar can also shut down these attacks entirely with moves like Torment, which prevents the use of the same attack multiple times in a row, or Embargo, which can shut down any items that the opponent is trying to use. If Incineroar's enemy is darting around too quickly for them to handle, Incineroar could also lower the enemy's speed with Scary Face, or squish the opponent appallingly flat with Quash, ensuring that Incineroar gets to act first regardless of speed. If the opponent is too durable to hurt by physical means, Incineroar can bypass durability altogether with attacks like Toxic, which poisons the enemies so badly that they pass out regardless of their maximum health in just a matter of seconds. And it's not just poison, either, but effects like burning or paralysis also shoot straight through an opponent's durability. And that burning that I just mentioned isn't an issue for a champion as hot as Incineroar. They're able to shoot fire hot enough to melt solid steel out of their... Ugh, belly button. Pokemon... Why are you the way that you are? They can also focus this heat into attacks, letting them unleash fiery punches, kicks, and burning hot sand for some reason. Incineroar can really go out there with their moveset with bug-type moves like Leech Life, which steals health from their opponent. Among all of these attacks, though, is potentially the coolest move in Incineroar's repertoire, their signature attack, Malicious Moonsault. By synergizing with their trainer, Incineroar leaps up into the air and body slams back onto the ground, creating a massive fiery explosion. All of these abilities pile together to make one heck of a champion. Incineroar is unique in that he can pose a serious threat to anybody who steps in the ring regardless of their power level. In fact, Pokemon generally as a franchise is uniquely skilled in this regard, being able to take on enemies that would otherwise be way beyond a different fighter's ability. And this is only augmented when you consider the fact that a fully leveled and optimized Incineroar has likely had 
thousands of would-be challengers that they've beaten. At the end of the day though, Incineroar just wants to fight their hardest and put on a good show for the crowd for the pure love of fighting. And beneath all of this fiery exterior, Incineroar really can be incredibly kind and thoughtful and apparently, according to the Pokedex, is particularly good with kids. But while they might have a soft spot for children, Incineroar is sure to bring the heat against any challenger brave enough to face them in the ring. With all that said, now that our fighters have been analyzed, it's time for our fight. And I'm happy to say that we asked to partner up with PETA to sponsor today's episode. Uh, but for some reason, they ignored us. So today's episode is brought to you by our patrons. If you like what we're doing here and want to support us, continue checking us out over there and sending a few dollars our way each month to help keep the series going. With that said, though, let's take a look at our fight and figure out who'll be eliminated and who'll move on to the next round of the Smash Bracket. Let's get into it. Good evening. Welcome one, welcome all to the fight night of the country, folks. We've certainly got a real lucky set of attackers on our hands tonight. Folks, I can't believe what I'm seeing, but this appears to be an entirely one-sided fight. I'll take a big one. Oh, oh yes. What a devastating no. blow by Incineroar! <laughs> Down goes Hibiki! There you have it, folks. That makes this round's winner our undefeated champion. The Fright, the Flamboyant, the Ferocious Incineroar! Can anyone challenge this powerful Pokemon? Ooh, a shot to the chest! Literally. Here's another Pokemon wants a shot at the challenger. Do you know how far I had to fly to get that drink? You're lucky I don't blow you to pieces right here. Hold on to your seats, folks. It appears we're in for a real fight tonight. <laughs> Never thought I'd miss the bars on Cornaria. <laughs> Well, your funeral. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Yes, and they're off to the races, folks. It appears the champion is going for a fight. <laughs> but it seems this challenger is no stranger to combat. <laughs> Like it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're definitely never going to get that PETA sponsorship now. This battle ended up being a landslide victory in Wolf's favor, whether he was inside or outside his ship. Not only did Wolf have a massive advantage in nearly every single category, but his battle experience and aggression made it all the more likely for him to execute on a winning strategy right from the start. While calculating the speed that Wolf himself needed to move around while piloting his Wolfen across the Lilac system, even moderate calculations have him moving millions of times faster than Incineroar. His best attack also hits millions of times harder than Incineroar's, and he can withstand far more than Incineroar's ever even come close to dishing out. While Incineroar did have a lot of fighting experience, most of that experience would be under the official League rules of Pokemon and the etiquette within that world as well. None of their experience would translate super well to fighting an outlaw like Wolf. Now, Incineroar did admittedly have a way to take Wolf out of the fight with status effects like Poison or Burning, which would totally bypass Wolf's massive durability. But when this option is put into the context of Wolf's sheer speed and power, it's just not realistic to expect this of Incineroar. They could technically kill Wolf in the same way that a Black Widow spider could technically kill a Navy SEAL. Sure, it's possible, but when both fighters are giving it their all, the chances of Incineroar coming out on top are astronomically small. Incineroar could maybe work his way around Wolf's best stats one at a time with moves like Quash, which would ensure that Incineroar could still act first regardless of speed, but any meaningful stat equalization would require many different moves in order to be set up successfully. Not to mention that this would all need to be done while contending with Wolf's lethal aggression and deadly arsenal. It would just be far too much for our little fire cat to handle. With all of these obstacles in their way, combined with the fact that Wolf is one of the best fighters in a galaxy full of great fighters, there's just no chance that Incineroar would ever be able to come close to taking this battle a majority of the time. When all is said and done, Wolf O'Donnell is the winner and will be moving on to the next round of the Smash Bracket. Next time on the Smash Bracket. We Fit Trainer Keep it up. versus, versus.